What's going on, everybody? This is Jordan with Conquer Trading and Investing, and we're getting ready here to look at the S&P 500, the equity markets, take a look at some important technical levels. Most importantly, take a look at what happened today with Jerome Powell and the FOMC and see how that is shaping the sessions to come. Let's start here looking at the S&P 500. I want you to notice this bull flag that we're currently in. You can see that we are closing down towards the bottom trend line support here right now, coming in right around the level of 3180. If that level is to break, it is possible we see some further sell side pressure, perhaps taking us down towards the 3140, 3136 area of support. That would be the first place to look for, possibly then to lean in on the long side. This right now though is a continuation pattern. This is just a pullback here. You could see a lot of people at the beginning of the rate decision, the, the rate statement rather, because there, no, there was no change on the rate, that you could see a lot of them got pulled into the dovish side because the Fed chairman came out basically as dovish as you could get out of the gate, saying that the Fed was to remain accommodative, approximately $120 billion in QE to be extended monthly. That's $80 billion buying treasury, $40 billion in mortgage-backed securities. There would be no negative rates or any type of rate hike signals as he slashes the GDP forecast. There are no plans for the Fed to raise rates through 2022. Now, the bottom line, the bottom line was that the U.S. economy still needs a lot of support and the downside risk remain elevated. Now, it was quite almost comical that twice Fed Chairman Powell was asked about the stock market. He was asked about the, the lofty valuations. He was asked whether or not he felt that the stocks were overbought. He was asked about whether he thought it was a bubble. And actually, Jerome just answered. The, he was also asked whether he felt like this was causing further inequality. Remember, there are class riots going on all across America. And Jerome's response to all of that was a simple no. Now, probably of most important for myself and the U.S. dollar, the Fed did not mention the yield curve control in the statement, right? It was briefly brought up in the presser that really did not become a focus of the market. The dollar's reaction was really key. The dollar first sold off heavily, heavily, and then it's since rebounding off the lows since the close of the press conference. You could take a look here at a 15-minute chart so you could really see the volatility. First, the dollar bid up and then sold off really hard and then has been whipsawing around, now starting to rise off of its lows. The real movers today though have been, have been both gold and silver. Now we talked about in the live stream yesterday and this morning, but in the live stream yesterday we talked about silver being in technically better shape in gold as it was sitting here on the pullback after breaking above this resistance, sitting on, the, on this support right over here and it was actually looking to resume upwards. Silver has taken off. Gold now is breaking above this resistance over here. This is setting up a possible buy entry in the sessions ahead on gold, why the silver has already executed a buy side trade. Bitcoin seems to be following behind both gold and silver, trying to break out above this $10,000 whole number resistance ahead. If it is able to do that, it does have an opportunity at actually breaking the 10,400 resistance, the trend line resistance, and beginning its bull market. Remember, the bottom line is the Fed said today that they are keeping it, they have no plans of even thinking about or starting a discussion about when they're going to be raising interest rates. That's definitely helping precious metals and Bitcoin right now, as that's in an environment they thrive in. Let's look over here at the S&P 500. Let me pull up the true trend. I am focused on this bull flag right now. I am waiting to see if this is going to be a continuation pattern to the upside. If we get a break above this trend line, that would trigger it. Again, we are closing the session towards the lows. Take a look at the NASDAQ though, by the way. The NASDAQ is almost at nosebleed heights. Look at, the, look at the trajectory here. Look at the trajectory. This is a really healthy 45 degree angle. And now all of a sudden we have gone blast off straight up. Now, 
you have to be careful because you don't know how high that move could go. But those moves generally end badly. I'm not trying to call a top or anything like that. Actually, I maintain my bullish bias here. It looks like if we break to the downside, if we if this if this bull flag does not materialize as a continuation pattern and we lose this level over here at 3180, then it looks like we're gonna see some further downside. I'm not interested in taking that trade to the downside. There's just simply much better opportunities out there than there is right here on the S&P. However, a breakout to the upside, I'll say, all right, it was able to shake this off. And at that point, the momentum continues. We're gonna be involved on that breakout to the upside or we'll watch what happens as we come in now because we are in a strong uptrend into some really strong supports. Watch how price reacts and look for that as an opportunity to go ahead and be able to get long. NASDAQ, like I said, is the only, is the only index closing up today. S&P uh, and Dow turned negative late into the session. You could look at this long wick over here. It's not really favoring the buyers, uh, but again, right now everything looks pretty status quo out there. All right, we're not we're not trying to call a sell off. I don't think this is the market top, but it is due for some type of retracement, cooling off, and that will give us the opportunity to see how deep it goes and when we could get in uh, to certain positions over here on the long side. Now, the best case scenario, best case, we are seeing elevated cases reports in the United States, specifically in four states: they safe Texas, Arizona, California. Right, we're seeing uh, infections rise. Uh, that's a wild card. I have to say, Jerome Powell se seemed much more upbeat than he has in last in last month's press conference or in the 60 Minutes interview, where he seemed legitimately worried. He didn't really have that aura about him today. He seemed a little more confident. Now he did 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 mention that there were a lot of risks out there that were not out of the woods yet. That we're still in the recovery even though the, the equity markets have priced in uh, a V recovery. And he did go on to say that really he was almost begging for help from, uh, from the government to enact stimulus, saying that it would be really helpful. You saw, um, you saw Treasury Secretary Muchin also out on the wires today saying the same thing, that he expects there will be another stimulus plan soon. In an election year, that could be tough, getting, getting both sides to agree on something for the American people. Right, but nevertheless, these these stimulus, these bailouts aren't for the American people anyway. So I don't even know why I even said that. But uh, the Fed would like to see it. The, the White House would like to see it. Whether or not there's any more stimulus, we'll see. The market would obviously love that, as it would the conversation turning towards any type of stimulus. Now, what I'm looking for here right now on the S and P, uh, I'm looking to see if we're able to hold this bottom support here of this bull flag if we're able to go ahead and start making new highs, uh, at, not new highs, all you know, but as far as on the eight hour time frame, breaking out of this bull flag as a continuation, or whether or not we retrace, retrace a little bit lower. <laughs> Peter Schiff had gone ahead and elaborated when Fed Powell was asked about what's happening with uh, the stock market. And, you know, as Peter put it, when asked if he's worried that the Fed policy is creating asset bubbles that might pop or miss allocation of resources that may leave the economy worse off, why exacerbating wealth inequality? Powell evaded the question by not answering it. Basically, his answer to all of this is no. By the way, we just looked at the height to trajectory of the NASDAQ speculation is running rampant as evidence by Google Trends. You are seeing the terms day trading and call options at all time highs. That is, my friend, the sign of a top. No, I'm not calling the top right now. It will be clear and easy for us to pick when we do it. This was really great to see. After replying to Dennis's comment and saying that, yeah, this is exactly what it's about. First thing, protected. That's your first concern, allowing yourself to see the opportunity from above and then attacking. He went on to say, we have a great teacher. Thank you, Dennis. I've paid zero attention to any news today. Just watching the price action around the meeting and learning from the reactions. It's a nice 
feeling when you're in control. A lot of traders, when it comes to FOMC meetings, when it comes to non-farm payrolls, they are chasing after momentum and price rather than being in control of what happens next. And that's where that leaves us. Right now, there is no position to be had. I thought we were gonna see some further volatility. I'm watching the FX markets very closely, specifically what happens with the dollar. We talked about early in the live stream that we might see an impulse downward that then is reversed and puts in a bottom in the dollar. That is on the table. The next move of the dollar, whether it makes, let's go look at the dollar right here really quick together. Let's go to a 30 minute time frame. If you see over here, this was the top since the FOMC and the bottom. There's your range. Let's see which way it breaks to the upside or downside. Right now, you're in the middle. There is no edge. You're in no man's land. Know where you are and trade accordingly instead of trying to force something. The only things that warrant a position right now is silver and gold setting up for one. Everyone, if, uh, watch Bitcoin too. Bit, this could be the day. This could be the day. Everyone, I'll see you all tomorrow morning. I hope you have a beautiful day and I'll talk to you soon.